This is Mrs. O'Neill for Chapter 7, Section 3, Bonding in Metals. In this section, you're going to understand the model of these valence electrons in a metal atom, and how the arrangement of atoms in a metal occur, and the importance of alloys. You have probably seen decorative fences, railings, or weather vanes made of metal called wrought iron. Wrought iron is a very pure form of iron that contains traces amounts of carbon. It is tough, malleable, ductile, and corrosion resistant material that melts at a very high temperature. As you already know, metals often have distinctive, useful properties. In this section, you will learn how metallic properties derive from the way that metal ions form bonds with one another. So if you think about this, this is wrought iron. This is a fence made out of wrought iron. First of all, if it's made out of iron, why is it black coloring? Well, that black comes from the carbon that they put in it uh, to mix it uh, to make this what's called this wrought iron. The other reason why carbon is added is so that it is corrosion resistant. In other words, hopefully you know by now that iron, if left outside, reacts with that oxygen and forms rust. But when iron is mixed with carbon, it actually is, it is going to prevent it from rusting, um, as well as being decorative. So you should have watched um, that intro information on metallic bonding. So here are my notes. I'm going to go through it again kind of quickly because you should have your own. So he talked about metallic bonding. Can't It's not really just one bond. Remember in an ionic bond, we were talking about one atom bonding with another. Well, metallic bonding is kind of all of these atoms who share their electrons, and he talked about them being a sea of electrons. So if we look at this model, I like how he puts all of these positives together, and those positives are representing the nucleus, but look at those electrons. There's just a sea of electrons. Those electrons are all over the place. Uh, so there's not ne necessarily like one bond or one electron being transferred or even uh, electrons being shared. They're just all over the place. Gave you that nice little flow chart as he always does because he talked about the different properties that metallic bonding gives us. So again, the metallic bonding is the sharing um, of those, those electrons or the sharing of bonds between metal atoms. I also want to bring to your attention that even a pure piece of metal like iron has metallic bonding within it. So it's not always two metals combined. So he talked about how electrons repel each other, and that's kind of why they're drifting around. And remember, those electrons are constantly moving. And again, he talked about those C of electrons. So he talked about certain properties then because of these electrons kind of flowing through the metal, uh, they possess definitely different uh, properties than, let's say, non-metals. So they're very conductive. They're malleable. Again, you can hammer them into different shapes, again, because those electrons are just moving past one another. Ductile. So you can actually take a gigantic piece of, let's say, copper, and you can make it into a really, 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 really skinny wire. Why? Because all you're doing is kind of shifting those electrons around. He also talked about volatility, and volatility means if something is volatile, I think of gasoline. Gasoline that you put in your car is a liquid, but you smell it hmm, as soon as you start pumping the gas. Why? Because the gasoline liquid evaporates. It's very volatile. It goes into that gas state um, very easily. So uh, going from a liquid to a gas basically on its own means that it's very volatile. Another example would be like acetone. Uh, so if you ever had to remove nail polish uh, with acetone or, or nail polish remover, you smell it very quickly or even even nail polish itself. When you can smell something quickly that's a liquid, that means that liquid, the liquid form of it, is going into the gas form on its own very quickly and you can smell it. 
He then also talked about melting point. Now, remember, we already talked about certain properties uh, that are trendy on the periodic table. And then he talked about melting points and how it's also a trend on the periodic table. But when you're dealing with certain metals, like the ones in the transition metals or the inner transition metals, groups 3 through 12, then it's not always the case. And he talked about, again, those electrons uh, being stable, okay, what electrons are uh, in their stable state based on their electron configuration. Uh, and again, he talked about those electrons being paired versus free electrons. So back to your packet of notes, uh, pause the video, fill in those blanks, read as you write, and then play to hear my words. So we want to remember that a metallic bond is not a bond between atoms. It's really just all of those metal atoms together and those free-flowing electrons. And that's why we call it a sea of electrons. It's just all these electrons in a pot. They're constantly moving and they're rocking and rolling, okay? So this could represent a pure metal or be metal and a metal together. Um, so again, this is what a metal would look like. We have our positive nucleus, and we have these electrons just surrounding that positive nu uh, nucleus, but they're all over the place. So again, if we have a metal and we apply a force to it, what's going to happen to that sea of electrons? It's just going to shift. It's just going to slide like grease. So when we are applying that force, that's why we can do certain things to metals, like mold it into shapes. So, some properties, we've already talked about some of these. Again, they're good conductors of electricity because of all of those electrons moving around. They have very high melting points. Uh, they're ductile, again, copper wire. They're malleable, like hammering uh, aluminum foil. And again, they're usually packed in some kind of orderly pattern. So again, this is just a nice picture showing you what's happening here with this copper piece of, uh, or a piece of copper. We're going to apply force and we're actually going to put it through a, a die. This is called a die and we're going to get some wire out of it. But we're not breaking, think about this guys, we're not breaking the copper wire. We're just molding it into a thin uh, wire. So if we pause and read this information. So again, when we talk about an ionic crystal, if we apply a force, it's going to shatter. However, metals, when we apply a force, it still stays in that one piece. So again, here we have that copper again, applying force to make in that wire. Here's that metal again. We're not really shattering anything like we are in ionic crystals. We're kind of kind of break things apart. So the question is, what causes an ionic crystal to break? Again, it's going to be that force that we break it with. So I like to remember malleable because we use a mallet, right, for met tools that are malleable, right, hammering into sheets. And again, showing you that structure. So again, these tomatoes have what's called a hexagon, closed packed arrangement. And again, we can find something like this in metals as well. What do I mean by that? So metal atoms are arranged in some kind of pattern. And that pattern can look something like this. That looks like a body-centered cube. This is what we call a face center cube. And this is what we call a hexagonal closed packed. So I just want to show you these just so you're understanding that different atoms of different metals pack in a different pattern. We're not going to have to know these, but if you ever take a course in college called material science, they really dig in deep into these patterns. And so my question is going to be, which of these arrangements is most closely packed? So clo uh, pause the video, and which one of these do you think actually the atoms are closer together? Hopefully you came up with zinc, right? Because this, uh, there's no space in between these at all. Where here, if you look at that cube, uh, there's space in between those atoms, and here there's a lot of them. So every metal or alloy has what's called a pattern arrangement. So what is an alloy? An alloy is just a mixture of metals. Again, we're not even saying that it's a bond, right? It's a metallic bond because we're mixing those electrons, but it's really just a mixture of metals. It's not really a chemical process. It's a physical process. We're mixing those um, metals together. So why then would they be so important? 
well if you ride a bike or if you know anybody who rides a bike if they have titanium in their bike it makes it, it makes it very very strong but very very light and of course if you're a bike rider you want your bike to be as light as possible so that you can go faster other important um, alloys are like steel. So steel again has a wide range of properties uh, such as being corrosion resistant, ductile, it's very hard and it's very tough. But if you notice depending on what kind of steel you want to use is going to give us a different composition of elements. So if you notice most of the iron all right, has other elements in it uh, to make it stronger, to make it corrosion resistant. And how about pure uh, metals? Of course, uh, if we if we compare pure metals like silver, but if we add that copper, it makes it a little bit more durable. Because pure silver would be very hard to wear as jewelry; it's too soft. But if we add a little bit of copper to it, huh? Just a little bit of copper makes it strong enough that we can use it for jewelry. All right, are you ready for three questions? Here we go, pause and see if you can come up with an answer. Hopefully you came up with that because I've mentioned that multiple times. How about number two? Hopefully you came up with that, that you paused and read and tried to choose an answer. And last but not least, number three. Hopefully that makes sense to you, right? Those properties are going to be better um, as alloys than they are as their individual metals. All right, we will see you in class.